In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can create a custom blog post layout using Generate Press Pro with the Elements feature and Generate Blocks Pro with all the dynamic content options. This is gonna be a real quick walkthrough to get you up and running creating your own custom blog post layouts in no time. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in. As you can see, this default post layout is not really the look I'm going for. So what we're gonna do in this video is create a custom blog post layout using Generate Press and the Elements feature inside the Pro version and Generate Blocks with their dynamic content options. So we're gonna hop back here into the dashboard and under Appearance, we'll go to Elements and we're gonna create a new element. So we'll click the Add New Element button and we're gonna choose the block as the element type. We'll go ahead and hit Create and we'll have to give this a name. We'll just call this blog post layout, something simple. Now, the element type here, we're gonna wanna change this to a content template. And then we have to choose the location we want this content template to be displayed in. So in our case, we're gonna use this in post, all post. So you could go down here and drill down to individual posts or posts within a category, but for the purpose of this, we'll just stick with all posts. Now I usually go in here and put all users as well, but you could have this different for logged in users, logged out users, etc. So we can go ahead and hit publish on this now, just out of habit to make sure everything's saved. And now we get to start designing our blog post layout. So what I'll do here first is drop in a container. This would be the hero section of our blog post. So let's give this a little bit of space. Maybe we'll say uh, 60 pixels of padding on the top, 24 on the right and left. And just so we can see it here, let's give it a really light gray background color. All right, that's perfect for the hero section background. Now we will probably want to drop in the post title, the categories and the featured image in here. So what I'll do here is we'll start with the post title. So I'm just gonna go and grab a headline block from Generate Blocks. I'm gonna change this to an H1. We'll center it here for this design. And now we need to bring in the dynamic content, which is the post title. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here under Dynamic Options and choose Title. So now this is gonna bring in the post title of the post dynamically, depending on which post you're looking at. So that works perfectly for me. We won't worry too much about styling everything in here. Uh, one thing else we might wanna add in this section is the categories. So I'm gonna drop in another headline block, change this to a paragraph tag, center it, and then I'm gonna use the dynamic options again, and I'm gonna check I'm gonna pick a list of terms. So the term I wanna use in this case is category. So you can change your term separated here. You can add something before, like I could say category with a colon and then have the category show up in there. Totally up to you on that. Uh, I'll go ahead and delete that out of here for this option. And I think I actually want to stick this above the title here. Now the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is bring in the post featured image. Now there is a block to just bring in the featured image from the post, but I don't like uh, that there's not a lot of control over the layout of the image, the size of it, rounded corners, all those kinds of things. So typically what I'll do is just drop in a container block, another generate blocks block, and this way I have all the control, the styling and control, uh, options to style out this image exactly how I want. So one quirk of this is if I go in here to the dynamic button now and go to put in the background image from the featured image, it doesn't allow that. You have to have a fallback image in there uh, for it to get started. So we'll just grab something random out of the um, media library for now, and that'll give us something to look at while we're styling this as well. So here we can decide how tall we want it to be. Let's say we only want it to be, I don't know, we'll go 400 pixels tall. And let's say we want to round the corners. We'll go 12 pixel radius on there, maybe eight. I don't know why I'm being picky. Okay, we'll go with the eight pixel radius. And now we can go in here and change this to the featured image. So let's go ahead and save our work where we're at now. We'll pull open this dummy blog post I have and look at it now that we've done these changes. So now you can see we have our light gray background, we have our uh, list of our categories, we have the title of the post, and we have the featured image that we've brought in. So all of that is working perfectly. So let's jump back in here and now we need the content for our post. So I'm going to add another uh, container block in here. And on this one, we're gonna have to give it some padding as well. Maybe we'll say uh, 60 pixels. We'll keep the same thing we did in the top one. 
but I don't want this content to be the whole width of the page. So I'm gonna go in here and change the container width to something smaller, we'll say 800 pixels. Now to bring in all the content from the post, we'll add a new block here and we'll choose the dynamic content block. In here, we'll choose post content. We also have post excerpt, term description, author description. But for this case, we're gonna use post content. Now this just puts some placeholder in here, but if we update this and go to the front end and refresh, we'll see that it's now showing all the content from our post. Now there's a couple other things you might wanna put in here as well. So we'll go ahead and add another headline block here. I'm gonna change this to uh, a paragraph and I'm actually gonna move it above my content here. And we're gonna choose dynamic content and we're gonna do post author name. So now here in this spot, it's gonna show the author's name. And we'll just change this to a different color just to uh, style it a bit, update that, refresh it on the front end. And we see here now it has the author's name. Of course, we could change in the WordPress settings how we want that to display. Right now it's just set to first name so it looks kind of funky. Um, but we could go in here and go to spacing and change this to inline width. So it's not a block level element, it's inline. We could duplicate it, which I do with control shift D. And in this one, instead of showing the author name, we could do the post date. So I'm gonna go back to this author and add a little space on the right hand side of it just to bring it away from the date a little bit. So there we go, we can update that, go to the front end and refresh. And you can see we have the author name and the date it was published. So just like that, we took the default post layout and created a completely custom layout. You'll see in this, um, this dummy install I have right here, I've created several different post layouts. So here's one I stole from uh, the NFL.com uh, website, kind of the layout they have. Uh, we have uh, this one here, which has kind of two columns here in the hero section, as well as this one here which is a little bit more of a traditional blog post. So really, uh, you can do just about anything you want to with the layout of your blog post. You just need to know how to work with those elements inside Generate Press Pro so you can set up the dynamic conditions of where you want all these things to show. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to help. Just reach out to me or drop a comment down below and we'll see you in the next one. If you're interested in learning more about Generate Blocks and Generate Press, I recently held a live one hour Zoom call where I rebuilt an entire page using Generate Blocks and Generate Press with a live audience. They were able to ask questions during the call and we were able to build almost an entire page and answer a lot of questions, go off on a few tangents and learn more about how you can build websites using blocks. So go ahead and click the link in the description and check out that video next.